Hello, my name is April Yvonne Garrett, and this is Amplify Baltimore, where we highlight some of the issues we face as a city and share with you the people and organizations who are working to make Baltimore better. <laughs> Earlier this week, while visiting my mother, she handed me this, one of my first library cards. For 80 years, the Enoch Pratt Free Library Summer Reading Program has opened worlds of wonder through reading to the young people of Baltimore. This summer, 15,000 young people have read over 150,000 books. Roswell Encina, the Pratt's energetic director of communications, shares the history, innovations, and impact of this historic program. <laughs> Today we are amplifying Baltimore at the Enoch Pratt Free Library with Roswell and Cena. Hi April. How are you today? I, I'm great. We're here in the children's department. Here, I love the so. children's department with the koi pond and all of these wonderful books. Roswell, tell us about the amazing summer reading program. Tell us a little bit about the history of the program. Well, it's been going on for more than 80 years. You know, 80 could you years. imagine generations of children and teens have gone through the summer reading program and it's been just amazing. Um, how beneficial this has been for the kids and teens in this general area because you know we've discovered that and there's been a lot of studies on this but the bottom line is kids need to continue reading during the summer months they can't sure. stop reading when school's done sure. I mean and we kind of want to make it a little bit more exciting for them too so they don't relate reading to textbooks and you know, sure. everything school related so we're encouraging parents to you know make it more fun like you know read to your kids set a good example I mean you don't have to be like sitting down at home you know like what you see in Norman Rockwell pictures, but you know, we encourage that too. But you can do it like when you're waiting at the grocery store, right. when you're, you know, when you're um, going on that long trip to Ocean yeah, in City. In the car, as exactly. opposed to the DVDs and in the you know, car, you and get to read and a book, you, right? we're like, It doesn't even have to be a book. You whip out your iPads or sure. your Kindles or Nooks. They also carry children's books and young right. adults' books now. So, you know, sure. read with them, read and learn what Twilight's all about, you right. know, learn about all these other new children's books. And, you know, it creates a great dynamic between right. Uh, parent and child. Tell us a little bit about the structure of the program. How is it that you're engaging people from different age groups to be a part of this incredible 80 year old tradition? It gives incentives, you know. The more books you read, the kids could win prizes from ah. tickets to the Orioles games to t shirts to t -shirts. toys. Wait a We've got exactly. to show Here's this the really awesome Enoch Pratt Free Library Summer Absolutely. Reading swag. And the, this is the one for this year. It's the, awesome. The theme this year is One World, Many Stories. Sure. So we love this theme this year because, you know, right. our big thing here at the Pratt is, you know, come into the library, we'll bring you all over the world. And that's, that's what the, exactly what the theme do. is this year. So I see all of these different library systems. So is it a part of the library system it's for the entire state of Maryland? For the entire state of Maryland, exactly. Oh, and I'm sure that because we are the Enoch Pratt Free Library in Baltimore that we are the leaders of the pack. Definitely. All right, that's awesome. <laughs> Last year, actually, um, we had more than 16,000 kids and teens register. That was the highest in our more than 80 year history that That's we've been incredible. doing summer reading. And what's more remarkable is like how many books they read. More than 222,000 books. Adults can actually participate in this program, which is a new exciting thing. So tell us a little bit more about that. And it's the same kind of concept. The more books you read, you'll win a prize. Okay. For the adult one, actually, this year, we have this little contest called Where in the World is Carla Hayden, you know, oh! the Pratt CEO. Yes, so every we week Carla we put Hayden. a new picture on our website. You got to guess where, what city she's in. Oh, that's and you awesome. put these all on the little entry sheet, and the winner gets to have lunch with her. That's awesome, because Carla Hayden is definitely one of my favorite people in Baltimore, and she's done so many amazing things with this library. She's made it a national standard. Of course, attached to the entire summer reading program are all these free programs, too. So it's okay. not like your usual story time programs. Sure. We have those, of course, and we have all these kind of out-of-the-box kind of um, programs, like what's going on right now here at the Central Library. There's a Birds of Prey program going on. So there's live birds that kids are ooing and eyeing over. Are you kidding? And there's some programs for teens, like, you know, makeup, um, you know, songwriting oh, workshops. Awesome. So it's like, it really creates kind of like the artists out of these kids. Sure, you know? and it's and, interactive and, and, and you're you know, really focusing on things that the, the East know, it's demographic learning, population It's imagination, is so it's perfect. It's awesome. a good kind of pairing. Why this program? Is there any other program that could be doing this summer? Well, one, it's free. You know, right. uh, you can't go anywhere we else in the city free. that will have all these free programs right. and all these cool incentives. But the second thing, is, again, it's a learning process. Right. Our whole, you know, mission is lifelong learning at the Pratt. It kind of encourages right. kids just to keep on reading. It doesn't have to be, you know, reading because you're supposed to read. But sure. it, as I was talking about, it could be like reading for the fun of it. Right. I mean, find the joy of, you know, exploring other countries, find the joy of learning about all these different cultures and, you know, just learning more about a book about Baltimore as well. Right. It would be great. So how do we find out? I mean, it's already started and people can still participate. Oh, so how absolutely. do we find out more information? How do people plug it's into very this easy. library or any of the other just branches? Just walk into any Pratt library across okay. the city or any, you know, library across the state and they'll help you out or just go to a 
our website, preplibrary.org, or awesome. follow us on Facebook or Twitter. Oh, so. yeah. Awesome Twitter account. <laughs> so, Russell, thank you, as always, for of your course. time and your wonderful talent. You bring so much energy to the library. We're excited about all the things that the wonderful Pratt Library does throughout the year, but the summer reading program is definitely a highlight for so many people in Baltimore, and we thank you so much for leading that charge. Thank you, too. All right. Former Harlem Globetrotter Chu Smith has thrilled audiences the world over with his basketball acumen. After retiring from the Globetrotters, Chu's love for his West Baltimore roots brought him back to Charm City to create Chu Smith Enterprise. At the core of his work is the Chu Smith Basketball Camp. Chu, along with special guests, former World Series Oreo great Mike Young, and NBA standout Dudley Bradley, share why this camp is about more than just basketball. So today, we are at Chu Smith Basketball Camp at the beautiful Coppin State University. And Chu, thank you so much for having us today. Thank you, April. Chu, I have to say, is one of my best friends. We both went to Baltimore City College, the greatest high school in America. So I had to get that plug in. But I'm totally excited to be here today because Chu is doing amazing work, not only in the city of Baltimore as a native of West Baltimore, but all across the country. So Chu, tell me why after traveling the world with the Harlem Grove Chatters, you said, I'm going to do a basketball camp in Baltimore for the youth of Baltimore. Well, the biggest thing is that, like when I was coming up, I always wanted to touch somebody that was doing big things. And people like Michael Young and Dudley Bradley and Kevin Parsons that were doing things at a high level, I wanted them to be able to feed that to me. Right. And at that time, we didn't have that. Sure. So my position was, when I come back to Baltimore, I'm going to give that experience to, to my young kids and get them to understand that they can brand out and expound across the globe with their dreams and their revelations. There are lots of sports camps all over the city this summer, but why come to the Chu Smith basketball camp? Well, it's just not basketball specific. You know, we have life skill components right. where we talk about perseverance. See, the, the biggest thing is you got to have the fundamentals in place. All we're doing is reinforcing what the parents should be giving their kids every day. Right. What I won't do and our staff won't do on a continuous basis is compromise our children. Right. We have to stand strong and understand that no matter what, we're going to teach these kids the right way how to be good people, be good students, and be great athletes. So it's fundamentals on a basketball court. You can't go from a re uh, to a reverse layup without learning how to in and out dribble or between the legs dribble. You can't go to calculus if you don't know the basic math. You can't be able to understand teamwork and the concepts of giving if you don't understand it in the early stages of, hey, let's share my dollar. So all the things from a life component, we give to these kids and we love them. Plus we got top-notch coaches. Absolutely. We got top-notch people like Michael Young and Dudley Bradley and Kevin Paul that comes in and gives of themselves each and every day for their life experiences so they can excel and be big. Tell me why this model for this camp works as opposed to any other model where somebody comes in for a week and they let it go. How many weeks is your camp? Our, we, our camp is five weeks. Wow. We have uh, two weeks at Cotton State and then we have three weeks at Newtown. Mm -hmm. And even this experience here at Cotton right. is, is, is humongous because the kids get a chance to be on a college campus, right. have college resources, and then they can touch it. Right. You know, And once they can touch it, they can say, I want to be here. So then they're inspired to be great and want to get a scholarship, not just from a, a basketball perspective, but from an academic perspective. So you're doing big things off the court as well. You've got a new children's book out. Can you tell us a little bit about that? I uh, published my first children's book uh, a couple months ago, and it's, it's called That's Big. I want to have my own baseball field. And I, it's a true story. At seven years old, I wanted to build a baseball field from the ground up, and my parents supported me. And you know, the kids agitated and said, no, you can't do it, you can't do it. And I just believed it. And that's what I want to instill in the kids, taking that experience with the book and understanding that, yes, you can do it. When people don't believe you, you just stay, stay the course and stay focused on your goals. And then they'll come up and be a part of what you're doing. You know, you got to believe that. So you don't do this alone. No man is an island. So tell me a little bit about your leadership team. Let me tell you about a legend, iconic figure. A legend? My great cab director, Lamont Speedy. Big Speedy! What's up, Speedy Speedy? How you doing? How's How everybody? you doing? I'm doing okay. So I see you working out the kids today. Oh, uh, yes. We just here, first day here at Coppin State, and we're looking forward to a successful summer with the camp. 
and we're just working on basic building good habits. How long have you been with the camp? Uh, I've been with the camp five years. Five, five years. years right? What have you learned over time by directing this camp, working with the young people of Baltimore about the resiliency, the tenacity, and the spirit of young people in Baltimore? The thing we try to get down to the youth is just to be disciplined. Mm -hmm. You're gonna have adversity. Things aren't always gonna go according to plan, but as long as you work hard and continue to work, good things are gonna happen. What surprises you about the young people that come to the camp? Well, the thing that surprised me is their skills. Ah. Uh, a lot of the kids, especially in our younger division, uh -huh. which I consider our 10-12, sure. are very skilled. And, they really and, are. Yes, I have seen are. that because I've been to a couple of championship games. I'm amazed with the skill set that they have. The yes. natural athletic ability. Oh, most definitely. And okay. the thing that we probably, me and you, we always talk about is each year our championship games have become more and more competitive. So games have been going down. This is past weekend. Right. We had in all it. three divisions, the 6 9, 10 yeah. 12, and 13 and up. Mm -hmm. All the games went over. Overtime. I saw them. They're exciting. So, you know, that's the thing we, we're definitely happy about. Well, you know, Chu, you're a pretty good judge of character. So tell me why, out of all the people that you could choose to direct your camp, you chose this man right here. Well, I'm going to tell you, you know, without Speedy, there is no Chu Smith camp. I met him 20 years ago battling him on a basketball court. Is that right? He was from New York and he, uh, uh, he played in college and he used to play with Jeff Cross and he was shooting the lights out. Uh, and we battled each other and, you know, he used to coach at Morgan State. I watched him coach up there. You know, five years ago we met in a, in a what was it, post office. Post office. Did you really? You met at a post office? Yeah, because after, you know, playing, we didn't see each other in a sure. while. And I had my camp shirt. That was after our first year. And I seen him. And he said, man, what you doing? You know, I told him, I said, man, we just finished our first year of our camp. All right. And he said, man, I'm transitioning out of the, the game from the college perspective. I want to do some hands-on work. So what happened was he, he came over and looked at the proposal, and we just sat down. We started bonding. I started telling him the vision. And he came in like gangbusters. And now we just developed these kids. And I mean, I just want to go on record saying that I'm proud of them. And it's because of him that, you know, we are where we are today. And, and I'm grateful to him. I wanted to do the Chief Smith camp because clearly we have a great personal relationship. He's been a friend for a long time. And I know you're gonna always stay rooted in this community, which is so important to amplifying this city. Part of the thing that we get are people who kind of flow in and flow out and do their thing and use Baltimore as a platform to kind of build, but they don't stay rooted. And our communities need to see people who are committed over and over again, year after year, building on five years, building on 10 years. They need to see that commitment and you guys absolutely exemplify that. So I can't thank you enough. I've seen these gorgeous kids time after time. They keep growing, they keep developing under you all because you allow them to flourish. And there's no greater gift that you can give to parents and there's no greater gift you can give to the city. So I thank you, Speedy, and I thank you too for amplifying Baltimore. Appreciate Definitely, you. thank you for having us. All right. Take care now. Mm -hmm. Appreciate it. Always. Always. I'm excited today because I came to the Chu Smith basketball camp on the right day. As many of you know, there is nothing sports about Baltimore that I don't love. And we are here with Baltimore Oriole great Mike Young, who is a Baltimore Oriole from 1982 to 1987. Some of the greatest years of our life, too, because yes, we were yes, at City yes, College. Yes. And he brought us a World Series. So, of course, we love that. But I want to know, why are you at the Chu Smith basketball camp? Well, I had the pleasure of meeting this gentleman here, uh, Chu Smith, last week. Uh, last week? Last week. See, this is the magic of Chu Smith. He <laughs> just draws you in. We had the opportunity <laughs> to sit down and discuss some things, and I shared things with him, and he shared with me. And we found out after talking that there was a marriage here. Mm. There was some synergy. Uh, we both had the same um, idea in regards to reaching out to the kids. And the next thing we knew, we were making plans for me to come here. So you got to talk with the young people today. When we came in, we saw the kids, and it was pin drop silence. Not because, you know, Chu's just a great communicator. They're so young, they have no idea or recollection from your time of being an athlete in Baltimore and what the significance of that was. But they can respect the legacy. Tell me why it's so important for you, as a, for, a former professional athlete, to get out and talk to young people on a consistent basis. When I was growing up, yes, I, want, I had, you know, dreams of being a professional uh, baseball player, but 
you know, I know the likelihood of that now for a lot of these kids, and whether it be baseball, basketball, or football, you know, it's a slim chance, you know. Mm -hmm. So I try to help them focus on other things that they might want to do. However, not taking away from their dream, always pushing forward to, to helping them believe that they can achieve this. Sure. Um, but it's so important to give back to the community. Even though I'm not from Baltimore, I still feel that I'm a part of the community because I lived here, mm -hmm. I played here, mm -hmm. got a chance to mingle and meet a lot of good people. So it's just important. She was doing a wonderful job. Absolutely. And to be able to be blessed to come together with him in just one week is, is amazing. Why did you see something in him that you wanted to offer to the young people of your camp? Just spur, phenomenal spur. You know, God doesn't make mistakes. And, and when he brought us together, I seen it in, in about 10 minutes. Right. I knew that I wanted to be a part of his life and hopefully he would want me to be a part of his. Absolutely. And when you have that kind of synergy and that kind of energy, you have to celebrate it and you have to bring it full circle so the young people can see it, they can touch it, and it, it can be some consistency. See, a lot of our kids don't understand that they kind of confuse because they'll see somebody like Mike, they'll see somebody like myself, and then they'll see that other side. Sure. And then it's like, hold up, but you don't have 80 million, and you right. don't have, I don't see you on TV every day. Sure. I only see you sporadically. Sure. So it's like, you know, is that the reason why you're gonna listen to them more so than us? So I want the consistency, and, and he represents that. And like I told him, I'm gonna support him in everything that he does, awesome. and that we're gonna work together, and, and it's easy. Vice versa. That's, That's right. Easy. So I hear you just recently moved back to the area. And I go back and forth from, from Baltimore to California to visit my family. So I have family that are coming out here. I'm having an event in September. Oh, wonderful. Um, yes, yeah, it's, it's gonna be September the 10th. It's actually gonna be here. Oh, yes. I'm gonna I'm gonna be hosting a fitness challenge, my foundation, uh, the Flow uh, Foundation, okay. which is gonna be September the 10th. Prior to that, we're gonna be involved with the um, Grand Prix, which is gonna be on oh, the second to the fourth. Sure. So they're gonna spotlight our our nonprofit foundation. Good. We're pretty excited. We're getting a lot of people that are interested in jumping on and being a part of what we're Thank doing. Thank you so much. Thank you. For coming pleasure. back to Baltimore, you amplified it in the 80s. We can't appreciate you enough for a World <laughs> Series win. We need another one, Adam Jones. We need another one. <laughs> but we'll, we'll, we're so grateful to have you back. Well, thank you so much. And it's thank you for supporting Chew as well. Absolutely. All right. Thank, thank you. And another surprise at the Chew Smith basketball camp. This man attracts everybody who's amazing. We have NBA great Dudley Bradley with us today, who decided to actually, of all the basketball camps in the world, to send his child to the Chew Smith basketball camp. Dudley, we're so grateful to have you today. Oh, it's good to be here. Now you are a Baltimore native. You were raised in East Baltimore, correct? Correct. I was born. I was born in John Hopkins Hospital, and I was raised in East part of Baltimore. And... Tell us about your college and your NBA career. Well, I went to the University of North Carolina under Coach Smith, who was a legend in itself. Absolutely. And, um, went there from 75 to 79. I was drafted by the Indiana Pacers in the first round. Wow. Um, which is a great opportunity because I, I came out with some great players, and Magic and yeah. Bill Card, right, Vinnie Johnson, and on and on, David Greenwood, and, you know, we had a large class. Sure. Uh, went on to play with the Phoenix Suns, the Washington Bullets, and the Atlanta Hawks. Wow, awesome. So out of all of the camps you could send your child to, knowing all the wonderful people you know, you chose the great Chew Smith. Now, I'm biased, but you tell me why you sent your child to this camp. Well, I knew that coming down here with Chew, he's going to get more than just basketball. And, right. Uh, my son always asked me the same question. He said, well, what, what would he do if he got into the NBA? And I told him, an intelligent man can do more than just play basketball. Yeah. When he finished basketball and when he has to go in there and actually read a contract, he'll actually know what it says instead of being a dummy and say, oh, yeah, I know what it says. When you break the rules, you break the rules. It doesn't it say that if you don't know what's on there, right. you just said you knew. So you were attracted to the fact that you know, reputation-wise, that Chu Smith is about teaching the fundamentals on and off the court. Yeah, because the fundamentals mm -hmm. is basketball. Sure. Uh, these kids that, you know, I grew up with kids like that that came out and could just play basketball, just right. come out and do all the little tricks and everything, but that's not basketball. Knowing the fundamentals is going to carry you a lot longer. It's like knowing the fundamentals of reading. You were in the NBA at a really interesting time in the league. Mm -hmm. You see a lot of the things that are going on now, the mass commercialization of it, there's about to be a lockout. When you look at some of the young people who have aspirations to be in the NBA, you look at young men like Chu and other folks who are doing camps, and what are some of the things that you see as sort of the brightest spots for that, some of the things that we should be amplifying with regard to that? 
I, I think the big biggest problem now is kids forget to reach back. Mm. They don't mention the truths. They don't mention the guys who actually gave them that opportunity. Oh, it's just me, 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 me. You have to be able to say, hey, I'm finished, right. and step away from the game. So many great players are doing that. They're staying there, and they're staying there, and staying there, and the game's over, and it's passing them by. Sure. Because they don't have anything else to do. They don't have a college degree. You know, you, they have to start speaking back and saying about the truth, how he helped me. Sure. How he helped me do my study, and how he taught me the fundamentals of basketball. Absolutely. What about you two? I mean, I, I just want to go on record saying, April, this is what it's all about. Absolutely. You know, when, when I can see a man of his stature being able to say these words, it, it touches me beyond because I'm giddy. See, because he did it before me. There is no Chu Smith if he doesn't make that sacrifice right. out there years ago to put things in place. Well, I can't thank you enough for being here, being present, amplifying Baltimore, supporting the work that this man is doing in our community because, again, he's a personal friend, so I know the man's heart. But I love the fact that you saw it and you, you sowed a seed into it, your own personal seed into it, and that you got how important that was. So I thank you both for being with us today. I thank you both for always amplifying Baltimore. That t-shirt looks real, real good on you right now. <laughs> we are here today with two participants in the Chu Smith basketball camp. They have been participants for the last four years, each of them. The camp is only six years old, so you guys are old school, old school veterans. So tell me your name and where you're going to school. I'm Dwayne Banks, and I'm going to Pikesville High School. And your name? Asia Jerton, and I'm homeschooled. Chu, tell me about these two wonderful young people, and, and also tell me a little bit about their family legacy and why they're connected to the camp. Well, Miss Asia here, her dad is one of our coaches, so he's been coaching for the last four years, and he's an overseas legend. He's played overseas in several countries, such as Germany, Finland, all over, and he won two state championships at Randallstown. Just a phenomenal guy. We call him Scooper Loot. Ah. And uh, her game in the last four years has elevated. You know, she's just a phenomenal young lady. Always listening, always empowering other people that's beside her. So I'm just grateful to Miss Asia. So Asia, when you came to the camp for the first time, what did you think? Were you ready for the camp? Were you a little scared? Were you one of the only girls at the camp? No, I always had some people to stand by me and help me out when I needed them. Awesome. When I first got here, I was a little scared because I really didn't know much about basketball. But Coach Chu here has been helping me a lot, like with everything I've been doing. So would you say you're a little bit more confident? Yeah. Oh, I saw your skills. I was at your game on Friday. She can hoop. She can definitely hoop. So you, young man, tell me a little bit about your connection to the camp, what you've enjoyed here in your four years. Well, let me give the legend. Let me speak to That's his That's right. Legacy. You got a legacy going legacy. on. We got to get the legacy and hold up. You know, it's, it's something about the pedigree of a young man and a young woman. And we just talked about Asia's pedigree, and we want to talk about this young man. His grandfather is a chairman of the Pro Football Hall of Fame named Stephen Perry. He was getting ready to be the commissioner of the league when God Goodell took the job. Okay. Legacy from within. His father went to college with me at Bowie. Great man, played football. And this guy here is just, he epitomized hard work, discipline, just a great kid, and you know, to see his growth in four years is phenomenal. So, Mr. Dwayne Banks. So, Mr. Dwayne Banks, I mean, after that kind of introduction, you got some big shoes to fill. How do you feel about your legacy? How do you feel about being a part of this camp? And what is the camp teaching you? Uh, I, I, I really like being a part of this camp. I feel as long as I've been here, I've been getting, I've gotten a lot of, a lot better, and. I'm very excited for the next years I come because I feel as though if I stay with Coach Chu, he'll take me to great places. If I stay with Coach Chu, he's going to take me to great places. How does it make you feel when you see young people who have been a part of this program, this vision that you've had for six years, for four years, you're seeing them elevate and grow and amplify every year? How does that make you feel? You know, it, it makes me emotional because, I mean, look at them. Look at our babies. Phenomenal. You know, for him to say that and for Asia to have those kind words for me is saying that um, I'm sowing into them. You know, they know what's real and what's not. They know I love them. They know I want the best for them, and I want them to be way better than me. If you could say anything to other parents and other young people looking at a camp, why would you tell other folks that they should participate, and why, what would you tell their parents with regard to how you think this camp has really enriched you? Well, I would say that Coach Chu has taught me about life as well as basketball. And I don't think I could learn that anywhere else besides here. Wow. 
when I needed help, he was always there for me. When I needed help with my drills, he was always there for me. So. Thank you, baby. Beautiful. And you, Mr. Dwayne, what do you say? Um, I think that this is a good, a really good, good, good camp because you don't just learn about basketball. I mean, last week we just learned that basketball is not just about dribbling a ball. It's, a, it's more, it's basketball is not always going to be here, you know, because you got life. And he, Coach Chu was telling us that life is more important than basketball. So he says life comes first. And so we've been learning a lot about like life skills we have and stuff like that. So I really think you should really look into this camp because it's not just a, about basketball. But I mean, of course, if you want to come here, you, you want to come to play basketball, but you still want to be able to learn some life skills for, for if, you, if this don't work out. Right. Well, it's obvious that you can see the growth, the development, the maturity, and the level of amazing accomplishment in these young people and what skills they've picked up from the Chu Smith basketball camp. So I'm grateful that you guys could share with us. You're a little sweaty on the nose, young man. That means you got to get back in the game. And you too, I saw you hoop it up last Friday, so you know I'm going to have to come back again. Are you doing all five weeks? Are you doing all five weeks? Yes. You got, see, these are lifers up in here. They're going to be doing this forever. They'll come back when they're in college and they're probably going to be coaching. So that's the beautiful thing about the Chu Smith basketball camp. It's not only a camp for young people and the parents come out on Fridays, it's a family. And I'm happy to be a part of that family and wearing the gear too. So, Amplify Baltimore, y'all. Amplify Chu Smith basketball camp and these young people. Thank you so much, guys, for Amplifying Baltimore. I hope this show provided you with some meaningful options to consider when choosing what activities your children might participate in next summer. Remember, we the people of Baltimore possess all we need to make our city thrive. With every thought, word, and action, each of us has the power to create the city we want. With this power, I hope you will always choose to amplify Baltimore.